Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to Plant and Alien here on YouTube. I'm Weird Little Alien or Noelle, whatever you choose to call me. So, um, I know this is old news. Like, these are some old ass fucking Mandela effects, but they legit are literally on my mind 24 7 because I just can't get out of my get it out of my head how we remember it this way and now they're saying it's this way and it's like no no like what the fuck you releasing in the fucking uh what are you releasing in the air with those chemtrails oh they come from planes and shit bitch I don't see no planes when I see these huge ass like chemtrails in the sky and there's not a plane around who knows what they're fucking polluting the air with hell for all we know they're making people sicker so they make more money off Medicaid off bills to the doctor like the government mm. got my eye on you okay so the first one I want to get into is Forrest Gump because this one really gets me like really really gets me because like I I just I just there's so much to say about this okay now we remember that well if you've seen Forrest Gump or if you've heard even this phrase that was said or whatever you want to call it this sentence that was said in the movie then you know what I'm talking about but Forrest Gump starred Tom Hanks and one of the lines in his movie stat is an iconic line and people always talk about is life is like a box of chocolates you'll never mama always said you'll never know what you're gonna get and that's how I always remember it now there's even a video of Tom Hanks say with James Corden on his show reenacting that scene and in it he says Mom always said life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That scene, and in it, he says, life is like a box of chocolates. Because you're talking about life in the present. So, of course, you're going to use is as present tense, right? Well, no. Apparently, it's never been life is like a box of chocolates. It's apparently always been life was like a box of chocolates. Now, not only does that sound wrong, not only does Tom Hanks himself remember that it was life is like a box of chocolates but also you're talking about life and that you never know what you're going to get and yet you're using it in a past tense but you're talking about it in the present it makes no sense why would you say life was like a box of chocolates is life ended like are we not still living like life is like a box of chocolates makes so much more sense but just to see that tom hanks even remembers life is like life is like a box of chocolates is just a cherry on top of this sunday but it just really gets me because, like, how the fuck are you going to say it's always been life was like a box of chocolates? Like, dude, you're talking about the present life, but yet you're using past tense. It doesn't make sense. Uh, that one gets me. That one really, really gets me. Like, that is always on my freaking mind. Uh, uh, another one that gets me is... Okay, Star Wars. I know either you're a huge fan, either you're just a fan, you're, uh, you've never heard of it, you've heard of it but never watched it, whatever it may be, you've probably already heard of Star Wars and this iconic line in the movie. Now, in the movie Star Wars, you know, when Darth Vader says, Luke, I am your father, that's how we all remember it. I mean, that sounds right. Luke, I am your father. Like, I can hear it clear as day, right? And there's even a... Well, actually, let me first say this. So, we remember it, Luke, I am your father. Maybe some people remember it differently, but I personally remember it, Luke, I am your father. Like, I remember clear as day. Well, apparently, it's never been that. It's always been, no, I am your father. But yet, 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 James Earl Jones, which I will insert the clip, even himself said he read the script and was like, wow, this is crazy. You know, the Luke, I am your father. Even James Earl Jones, who plays Darth Vader, who read this line, knows that it was Luke, I am your father, because he remembers reading it and how crazy it was. And yet, we're supposed to believe it's always been, no, I am your father. Like, how do you explain that away when the actor himself who said the line remembers saying, Luke, I am your father? Like, are you kidding me? Like, ah! Like, dude, 
I think people are time traveling, man. I really, really do. I honestly think people are time time traveling and they're messing up the whole fucking timeline. Like in little ways, like the butterfly effect. Like I feel like people are time traveling and they're me changing the past in little ways that are creating Mandela effects. Because like I just don't know how you explain this away. Like, come on. I'll never join you. If you only knew the power of the dark side. When I first saw the dialogue that said, Luke, I am your father, I said to myself, he's lying. I wonder how they're going to play that liar. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. Say what? I wanted to get into one conspiracy theory, and this conspiracy theory is that maybe Lizzie McGuire was schizophrenic. And when I heard this, I was like, no. Because, you know, she has that cartoon version of herself she's always talking to and stuff like that, and always pops up and shit. But, and I see where that's coming from, I see where that conspiracy comes from, but when I heard that, I was like, no. Because I view the cartoon version of her as, like, her inner voice, like, that inner struggle, like... Like, me with anxiety. Like, I want to go out, but inside my head it's like, no, Noelle, don't go out. Don't go out. You're not going out. And so I don't go out, you know? So I feel like for Lizzie McGuire, that cartoon version was kind of like her inner voice. Was kind of like the thing that pushed her to really do stuff. Like, when she was like, oh, I love... I really want to, like, ask Ethan out. Or I really like Ethan. Her inside voice, her little cartoon version would be like, just do it, you know? Like, like kind of like that. So that conspiracy theory is definitely interesting because I do hear a lot about uh, um, kid shows from back in the day that have some like dark meanings behind them or conspiracy th dark meanings behind them. So I'm all for that. But with the Lizzie McGuire, I don't see it. I mean, I know it's just a conspiracy theory, but I'm not on board with them. this one. I think I don't see her as being uh, schizophrenic. I just see it as her inner voice, you know, her inner conscious, you know, her her struggling with her fucking uh, little voice inside her head. You know, that's how I kind of view it. But everyone's different. Are you okay? I cannot believe you did that. I can't believe it either. But Miranda would jump on a paint grenade for me. Besides, green's very in this season. And it's not like I was the only one whose picture came out weird. Smile. <laughs> okay, now on to... Back to Mandela effects. Now this one especially gets me because this has been shown in countless movies, TV shows, anything you can think of, it's been recreated and shown because it's so iconic. And it is from Silence of the Lambs. You think, I, I think you know what I'm getting at here. Well, in Silence of the Lambs, when Claire Reese first goes to meet Hannibal, I remember him saying, hello, Claire Reese. That's how I remember it. Hello, Clarice. Remembering it clear as day. Hello, Clarice. I mean, it's used in movies and TV shows, like I said. Hello, Clarice. It's, I see it even as memes and stuff. Hello, Clarice. Like, it is hello, Clarice. But no, 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 no. Now when you go back, and now what they expect us to believe is that it's always been morning. That just... Really? Like, I guess Hannibal's, like, definitely uh, interesting and scary enough to make morning sound kind of creepy. But I remember Hello, Clarice. Like, I remember Hello, Clarice. So many people do. And you're trying to tell us now that it's always been morning? Like, no, 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 no. That just, no. That does not vibe with me. Because I would remember Morning and Hello, Clarice. Okay? We didn't just make up this Hello, Clarice fucking thing in the movie. Like, this, everyone remembers Hello, Clarice. Like, oh my god. And you're supposed to, and you expect us to believe Morning? Like, bitch, I don't know what you're trying to put in our water or in the air, but I'm not falling for it. Okay? And none of us are. Because, fuck, this goes way beyond Mandela effects. Like, something is seriously happening with our timeline. I don't know if we're, we're in an alternate reality, conspiracy time, but like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, there are so many crazy Mandela effects and it just doesn't make sense.
This one hit close to home because this was my bop growing up. It still is my bop. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I legit, when I was younger and I was in the car with my mom and this song came on, I blasted it. I would make her fucking just sit in the park, like, in our driveway. And I'd be like, I'm not getting out until I listen to this full song. And the song is Barbie Girl. Like, legit, my song. Like, I just, I don't, it's been my bop since I was younger. It was my obsession. I loved it. So I know it pretty fucking well. Well, in the song, it says, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, right? That's how I remember it. That's how, when I search it, this is what's crazy, is when I search it, the lyrics come up. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. When I search YouTube videos with the lyrics, it comes up. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. But yet, but yet, when you watch the actual video, it says, I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. And now apparently that's what it's always been, is I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. Which makes sense. Okay, that doesn't sound stupid, but it makes more sense to say I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Because I'm sure there's more than just one Barbie world. And it's like, how the F is everyone else, including lyrics for the song, saying I'm saying it's I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, but yet when you listen to the song, it's I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. No, 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 no. That has not always been that way. Like, because like, I could understand if maybe we misheard it, but how do so many people mishear it? Like, there's just no freaking way. Like, dude, no, there's just no fucking way. Another one that gets me, Judge Judy. Like, I am, I'm honestly not a fan of Judge Judy. It was just my grandma. She loved Judge Judy. Oh my God, she loved her so much. Legit, every time Judge Judy was on, my grandma was right there sitting watching or she'd be cooking and watching. She loved Judge Judy. Like, she loved her. So, I spent a lot of time with my grandma because she was my best friend. And, uh, so we would be at her house and we'd be, you know, I'd be watching Judge Judy with her because, of course, it's on TV. She's watching and I'm going to watch it with her. She's the person who got me into ID and Lifetime movies. So, she also kind of got me into, oh, and she got me into Maury and Jerry Springer, which, yay. Um... But yeah, so I always watched Judge Judy with her, even though I didn't really like it. I still, you know, of course, I'm going to watch it with my grandma. I'm already there. So we'd watch it. And I always remember at the end when the case is done and she's like, all right, you're free to go or whatever, you know, court is adjourned. I remember her like picking up the papers, you know, like doing this, hitting the gravel and like getting up. Or she, I remember her hitting the gravel getting her papers, and then getting up. But I remember her, after everything was done with the case, and, you know, one side had won or whatever, she would hit the gravel. Like, I remember her having a gravel. First off, this is a TV show about a judge. You know they're going to put a gravel in there just for the effect of having a gravel and the sound of it. But it's not even that. I remember... Like, I can picture her in my head with the gravel hitting it. I can picture it clear as freaking day. I can still hear it, the gravel hitting. But no, apparently we're supposed to believe she's never, ever had a gravel. Like, ah! Judge Judy, come out and say if you ever had a gravel or not. Because I know you did. Like, dude, I know she did. Like, that's just so... Ah! Like, stop messing with my head, world. Like, you're fucking messing me up. Now, two more things I want to talk about, which are two of the craziest things ever, but it is two shows that basically predicted 9-11, and the first show I'm going to say is Johnny Bravo. Now, in an episode of Johnny Bravo, four months before 9-11, there was a poster in the background for what I'm assuming a movie coming out, because at the top it said coming soon, but there was a poster behind Johnny Bravo in an episode that had the Twin Towers in flames, and it said, coming soon. Now, this was four months before 9-11 happened. Not the only one. Another one is The Lone Gunman, which lasted for one season, 13 episodes, but its very first episode, now this was six months before 9-11, but its very first episode was stopping a terrorist attack on the Twin Towers. Taking a schedule stop. 
corner of Liberty and Washington. Or Manhattan. World Trade Center. I'm going to crash the plane into the World Trade Center. I'll tell the flight crew. 9-11, these two shows were had either nine had the Twin Towers in the background up in flames or had the episode sur uh, surrounded by the fact that they're trying to stop a terrorist attack on the Twin Towers, which is crazy. Their very first episode, and that's what they go to. And it's just so crazy to me. Like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know. I guess you can take it as you want, but for me, that's just, like, I don't know how I feel about it. It's so crazy. It's like, I don't know, like, did, like, do people, like, get feelings? Like, maybe at the time they're like, oh, let's put this in the background, not realizing that four or six months later it was going to actually happen, you know? Maybe it was just that gut feeling like, eh, maybe we should put this in the background, or maybe the first episode should be about this, not knowing why they want to, and then, you know, 9-11 happens. It's just so crazy to me. But all these fucking Mandela effects are screwing with my head. Like, seriously... People are time traveling. It's like the only thing I can think of. Either we're in an alternate reality or people are time traveling and they're messing up little parts of the past. Like the Bernstein Bears that are apparently always been the Bernstein Bears. Like, ugh. I read the books. I watched the movies when I was a kid. Like, you know, the sh whatever movie show. I watched all that. I was into the Bernstein Bears. You know, God, I wish I still had those freaking books so I could prove them that they were always the Bernstein Bears. But no, that's another one. It's like, that's a major one, is that everyone remembers the Bernstein Bears. I even asked multiple people in my life, and they all remember it, the Bernstein Bears. But apparently, it's always been the Bernstein Bears. I mean, I... Okay, so you're telling me this whole time everyone's been thinking it's the Bernstein Bears, but instead it's always been the Bernstein. First off, there are two different words. It's not like you would get them confused easily. And the Bernstein Bears sounds really stupid, no offense, but it does. Like, the Bernstein Bears, that's what they were called. And what's even crazier is... uh. I had saw on someone else's video that a guy had um, a VHS tape, and it, on the front it did have the Bernstein Bears, but on the side it had the Bernstein Bears. I mean, come on. There we go. So I'm able to zoom in there. I thought there was a button on here. Now, something is seriously going on in the world. Whether people are fucking time traveling and messing up little things in the past, whether we're in an alternate reality, whether this is all assimilation, I don't know. So many conspiracy theories, so many Mandela effects. Like, I just feel like this is too much. Like, there's just, how do you explain this away? Especially when the actors themselves remember it that way and yet now everyone's trying to say no it's never been that way it's always been this way and it's like no we know not just the fans but also the people who were in these movies who said these things like how do you explain that time traveling that's my conspiracy is time traveling because i'm just saying it's possible who knows like i mean there's been conspiracy theories about people time traveling there's been pictures of like a guy way back in the day who was on a cell phone when phones weren't even invented yet, like all kinds of crazy shit, but I really do think, like, either, yeah, I honestly think people are time traveling, and they're messing with the past in little ways, and it's affecting, it's affecting the future as we were, like, it's affecting the future, and causing us to remember the past a certain way, but it's not that way anymore, because it's just, how do you explain all this, there's just no way to explain it away, there just is no freaking way, so yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to talk about a few Mandela effects and some conspiracy theories because this shit is always on my mind. I always want to make a video, but I always think, ugh, I'm not going to be good at it. It's going to be stupid. But I like, you know what, even if it's just for me to watch, I can just, or even just for me to talk about, that's all I need because the life is like a box of chocolates has been on my mind and I can't get it out. So I wanted to talk about all this. And yeah, hopefully I'll make more in the future and I hope you enjoyed. So 